You know, I do these videos telling you whom not to date. Don't date this girl, don't date that girl, don't date single mothers, don't date uh, damaged girls and whatnot. And here's another of those videos. It's, you know, don't date unhappy girls. But you see, it's easier to find the negative than the positive. It's easier to discount someone because they carry some negative trait than it is to vote in favor of somebody because they have a positive trait. People have different positive traits. Women have a whole bunch of different positive traits and virtues. And so the issue is, you know, trying to find the one who has the right virtues is silly, but it's much easier to find and discard those girls who have defects. And unhappy girls are... <sighs> Unfortunately, I've had some experience with unhappy girls. Some years ago, I dated uh, an unhappy girl for uh, almost a year, just shy of a year, as a matter of fact. And she was, uh, she was lovely. She was uh, tall, uh, pretty, uh, thin, great body. She was, what, 24 at the time that we were dating? And, uh, you know, she could have had any guy, really. I mean, she was that pretty and that, you know, interesting. Um, but the problem was that at her core, she was so unhappy and she was so unhappy and worse still, nothing gave her joy. Mm -hmm. Nothing that I did, nothing that happened around us during the time that we dated gave her any kind of happiness. She was always like semi morose. And sometimes I just ask myself, well, you know, why was she with me? <laughs> you know, because she didn't seem to be happy. And for a while I thought, you know, maybe I'm doing something wrong or whatnot, but no, it was her constitution. Her very soul was just so unhappy. I'll give you a specific example. Like one time I bought her a very expensive computer mm -hmm. because she was into photography and uh, her computer was just not running Photoshop anymore. It was an old computer. And uh, I don't remember if it broke down or had issues. It didn't really matter. I decided, hey, I'm just gonna buy her one. I bought her a very good uh, Macintosh computer and I gave it to her like a big surprise. It wasn't like her birthday or a special day or Valentine's or any nonsense like that. No, I just bought it and I gave it to her and I made it like a big surprise, right? And I made it like a big surprise and I thought that she'd be happy. And her reaction in a weird way kind of broke my heart. Her reaction was, oh, that's nice. That was it, <laughs> you know, there was, there was no joy. You know, I'm not asking for somebody to be like exaggerated about their, you know, emotional feedback. You know, I, I wasn't expecting her to just dance for joy and, and do some cartwheels or something. That would have been foolish, of course, but I did expect something, some kind of demonstration that she was happy, but that was it. Oh, that's nice. But whenever she got upset, holy cow, it was monumental. It was like this volcano ready to explode. And it was, uh, uh, <laughs> it was a little bit terrifying to tell you the truth. I was always a little worried about pissing her off somehow, that I might say the wrong thing or, or do something or whatnot. And because of this tension, quickly I started to not really care if she got upset or not. Yeah, because you as a man can't live on a walk on eggshells every second of the day that you're with some woman, your woman, your girlfriend or wife. You can't. And after a while you get tired of it. And after a while you don't really care. You don't really care if you upset her. And sometimes, because of these eruptions, because it's just constant tension, in a weird way, you want to poke the bear. You want to like do things to annoy her, mm? to piss her off, because you're living in tension. Yeah, and that living in tension was just, <sighs> because of it, it was hard to really get to know her. I mean, we dated for almost a year. I mean, we saw each other pretty much every day. Huh? She would come to my place from work and uh, just hang out and, and be there overnight. And then the next morning she'd go to work and I'd go to work. And then we'd be together that evening and have dinner together and the whole thing. But in all that time, those hours and hours that we spent together, I didn't get to know her much. And do you know why? Because I was never at ease. She was so unhappy that I never felt that I could just ease into something perhaps a little upsetting, but getting to know her a little bit more. I never really got to know her because of this unhappiness 
that just, it didn't, how could I put it? I didn't want to provoke anything that would make her even more unhappy. Well, you see? We broke up on multiple occasions. I broke up with her on three separate occasions. And, and finally, I actually kind of ghosted on her. <laughs> I just couldn't take it. Mm -hmm. I just needed a break. I just needed to get away from her. And, uh, you know, when I sort of like semi ghosted on her, when she eventually got hold of me, she was screaming and furious at me, you know, and she was so unhappy and it just, I, I couldn't take it anymore. And sometimes I think about her and I, I think about how lovely she was because she was, I think about how feminine she was. I think about all the things that she did for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, the sex was great, right? She was willing to have sex all the time, but here's what's interesting. She didn't get any joy out of it. Mm -mm. No, for her, the sex was kind of like the thing that she had to do in order to maintain our relationship, you know? I mean, a lot of times I didn't really want to have sex with her. I wanted to like hang out and just talk, you know, because you can't be like screwing like bunnies all the time, right? But she sort of like insisted on having sex all the time, even when she didn't really want to. And I sensed that she didn't really want to. And it was sort of like, you know, she was like throwing me a bone. <laughs> and it was just so weird and so sad. And the thing is, see, I knew at the time and certainly after the fact that nothing I could have done or said would have changed how unhappy she was. It was just in her soul. Uh, a few of the things that she told me about her background and whatnot l made me understand a little bit as to the, the origins of her unhappiness. But here's the thing, the key issue. She made absolutely no effort to make herself happy, to get out of this unhappiness hole. She stayed there and made absolutely sure that there was no way for her to get out of this hole. Yeah, she had a dead end job. She made no effort to improve her situation. She was actually a very good photographer, but she didn't try to sell her work, get gigs. She could have gotten gigs. I mean, she was that good. She, was a, she had a great eye. And actually I got her camera. I had forgotten that. Yeah, I got her camera, a very good camera to, to help her, help her along in her career. And she'd fiddle endlessly on Photoshop on her, on her pictures and whatnot, but she would never show them to anybody. She would never actually try to succeed as a photographer. And she remained working as she did as a waitress. That was her job. And she hated it. It made her miserable, but she made no effort to get a better job. She made no effort to get paying gigs as a photographer as she could have. She made no effort to get out of her unhappiness. And that's the thing about unhappy girls. In a weird way, they're happy in their misery and they will drag you down with her. Mm -hmm. And eventually she will start to focus on you as the cause of your unhappiness. That's the thing. And I think that that was the reason that ultimately I just didn't want to be with her because I felt slowly but surely that her, her, her searchlight, her blame searchlight, if you will, was going to inevitably fall on me. I was going to be the reason that she was unhappy or she would explain it to herself and I would be stuck with her with a person who blamed me for the unhappiness of her soul. Yeah, I don't mind telling you that for a while we tried to get pregnant back when when things were going well or I thought that they were going semi well. I mean, I really wasn't thinking, you know, you guys, you don't really think about the relationship. You know, you figure that if you got the girlfriend and she's around long enough and she's all right, then, you know, maybe why not have a kid? You know, I mean, that's sort of like the way you think. And for a time we tried to have a kid. Thank God it didn't happen. It just didn't happen, not for lack of effort, but because, you know, circumstances and thank goodness, because then I would have been tied to this woman who would have been so unhappy all of her life. Nothing I would have done would have changed her unhappiness. And ultimately she would have started to blame me for her unhappiness. By the way, she wanted to have a kid. She wanted to have a kid very badly. And you know, she was into it. She knew all the, 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 the whole cycles and all the rest of it. And she knew, you know, what kind of hormones that she should be having at a proper level. And all. I mean, she was really into having a kid. And I realized after the fact, long after the fact, after I gave it some thought, was that she wanted a kid because she figured that maybe with a kid, she'd stop being unhappy. Maybe with a kid, a kid would, or several kids, would make her not unhappy. And no, nothing I could have given her be it a child, a computer, a camera, a vacation to some nice place, which we took, 
nothing would have changed her unhappiness. And I discovered this on a trip that we took together. Yeah, we traveled to a foreign city and it was lovely. It was, uh, we went to a very nice hotel and all the rest of it and she was so furious. She was just angry, just upset. Because I realized later that change, even going on a vacation, which is a minimal change really, just going on a little adventure and then coming back, right? Uh, the, the change of the vacation made her upset, the lack of stability. And I think that that might have been the, the ca ca cause, rather, sorry, of her unhappiness, but I don't know. I mean, th that's not the point here. The point was that, see, we went on this vacation and I got it, you know, spur of the moment, thinking that it would cheer her up and it didn't cheer her up. She was furious, you know? And then later, when I brought this up, she said, oh, I was kind of like getting close to my period and you know how I get and whatnot. No, 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 no. It was just in her. She was just constantly unhappy. And the thing is, see, we guys, we want to fix stuff and that's our flaw, okay? And I've said this before in other videos, you know, you can't save her. You cannot save her. You as a guy will never have the equipment necessary to quote unquote fix a woman. You know, be she damaged or be she unhappy. Mm -hmm. Because you need to be with a woman who is fundamentally okay with her life okay with her life in the sense of that, you know, where she's going insofar as her occupation or whatnot, and who she is as a person, as an individual. She has to be fundamentally okay with it. Perhaps not thrilled, but basically okay. She cannot be negative. Mm -hmm. Because if she's negative, nothing you do will change that fact. But if she's, you know, at the zero level or a little bit positive, anything you do will actually have a positive impact on her it will bring her up. Yeah, you know, I always think of this relationship, you know, what would have happened if I'd been dating like a, a, a girl who was not unhappy? If she'd been, you know, at, at the zero or a little bit positive. I think that we would have been very happy together. Mm -hmm. I think that it would have been one of the more important, if not the most important relationships in my life. I mean that sincerely. If she'd just been just not so unhappy, the things that I would have done for her, that I did do for her, would have actually made her happy, would have cheered her up, would have given her joy. And a child, if we'd had one, would have made her truly happy. It certainly would have made me happy. I've always loved children and I enjoy having them and I think that they, they just bring so much joy. But see, if she, this girl that I'm thinking about, if she had had just a little bit of joy in her life, not been so unhappy, so negative, so down all the time. If she just had a little bit, all the efforts I made to make her happy would have truly made her happy. She would have been on the positive end and having a child together would have given us great joy, both of us. And we would have made a lovely and happy family. But that didn't happen. Her unhappiness kept us from that. And her unhappiness kept me from even getting to know her properly. Like I said before, it, it's, it's something that I regret very deeply. Mm -hmm. For a while after we broke up, I kind of like fooled myself into thinking, no, it wasn't that bad. I actually tried to get back in touch with her later, some months later, when I kind of like forgotten how unhappy she truly was. But then, you know, I started really remembering, really remembering, you know, the, all the little things. Because, you know, retrospectively, you only re remember the good things and you don't remember the bad things, right? Uh, you remember those, you know, great marathon sex sessions. You remember, you know, uh, uh, going around a city, exploring it with a camera and taking footage and whatnot. You remember the good times. You remember going to some nice restaurant. You remember going to uh, some nice boat ride or something like that. You don't remember the daily grind. And the daily grind is where a relationship actually happens. The daily grind of just having a quiet dinner, you know, and watching a movie and just hanging out and chilling out. That's the real relationship. And when you're in with an unhappy girl, you can't have that. When I started remembering that, that quotidian grind, then I started remembering how unhappy she was and how unhappy she made me feel. And that was the thing. This was a period in my life where a lot of the work that I did was really good. Yeah, I got a lot accomplished. And retrospectively, I realized why. My work was a bit of an escape from her. Because while I was with her, whenever she was around, I was just sort of like down because of her. 
And so when she wasn't around, when I was working, when she was working, that's when I really focused. I put all of my effort into my work. Mm -hmm. And it came out pretty good at that time because of it, because I was trying to get away from her. That's my story with this unhappy girl. Mm -hmm. And you know, you will come across these unhappy girls. Mm -hmm. You gotta be careful. Because the reason that they're unhappy, more often than not, is their family life. Because this unhappy girl that I'm talking about, her family life had been somewhat of a mess. Mm -hmm. Her parents had divorced, you know, a whole mess, you know, typical. Uh, but also, you know, sometimes some girls like this, they're just born that way. They're just unhappy. The, the dial of their happiness meter is just negative. And nothing you do will get it out of that negativity. Nothing will, you do will make her positive. And you have to feel pity for them because there's nothing you can do. Yeah? It's like uh, when you see like a, like a child in a wheelchair. It breaks your heart, but there's nothing that you can do to fix this. You have to look at it that. And you have to realize that if you are with an unhappy girl, she will only bring you misery and unhappiness too. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, please check out my Patreon. Link is in the description below. On Patreon, you'll find over 150 videos and webinars that you will find nowhere else. I mean, they are exclusive to Patreon and uh, they're pretty good. So go check it out. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you next time.